let's just lift our hands to a God who proves himself to be faithful and proves himself to be constant and proves himself to be sure. Thank you, God. You are worthy. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, God. Thank you. And in appreciating that, I will start from my conclusion that God is good and that God is timely and that God is forever faithful. The issues are that for years I struggled with me. My biggest enemy was myself. And so I never had the difficulty of really comparing myself with others, but with myself. And so I thought that there was a certain image of what I thought I should be. And because I didn't reach to that or I didn't look that way, I constantly told myself otherwise or negative things. And I remember when we were at Penta, Pastor had started his um, messages on pride. And I, I found that I was full of it, but in its most humblest form, where I was afraid of being thought negatively of, and so I, I preferred to stay in the background. And even though it didn't seem that way, that is what it was for me. That is what was going on in my head. And so I struggled with that. And I, I, I built my hope and my foundation in things that were around me um, in my the relationship of my parents I built my hope and my foundation in my schoolwork and uh, I identified myself in just external things and I remember when uh, the relationship with my parents finally deteriorated and I, I felt like I lost it. And when I had serious issues with school, where I was on the verge of being kicked out of a university, I found myself in a even greater depressive state that I could not pull myself out of. And all of this added to the pride that I struggled with. And I I saw God work in my life and pull me out of the mess that I found myself in and not because I had got myself in any trouble per se but the damning thoughts that I had in my head about myself and I thank God for my mother not just for being a spiritual woman but for being a practical woman and she took me to counseling I, I went to a a clinical therapist and I thought it's strange you know because we were always taught that you know you, these things don't happen to Christians we, we work our way out of it but I thank God for for her and I thank God for putting, you know, giving mankind that kind of knowledge 
to know how to work with people. And I believe that God is an awesome God and he can fix anything you're going through. But he also created therapists, you know. And so we have to use them. And that month was one of the most intense months of my life. And with the help of my therapist and with the help of God, I, I acknowledge some um, dangerous things in my heart and some kingdoms in my heart that I didn't allow God to take control of. And pride is so, so, it's so destructive because it, it causes you to sit in a place, well, the, it caused me to sit in a place of fear and fear of failure to the point where I didn't move and I didn't reach out for help and I suffered in silence. But God is faithful. And he's good. And he's timely. And so, I've always interpreted the scripture, you know, the wages of sin is death and that you die. But in truth and in fact, it is death. And it might not be death of your soul, but I had the death of opportunities. I had the death of relationships because of the sin that I allowed to fester in my heart. And so God is just. And if he tells you that this is a consequence of your action, he will meet it out to you. However, he does not leave you there to suffer in it. He makes way for your escape. And so God helped me and he has been helping me. And I see myself now the way that he sees me. And that has been my prayer. That has been my prayer. And so I don't, I don't, there are I've stopped comparing myself to what I thought I should have been to who I am now or who I am because I've found peace in knowing that God does everything within his time. And because he's always seen the bigger picture, it never mattered if I saw it. And so he's always been satisfied with Tamoy Reed in the state that she's in. He sees me now. He loves me now. And he's satisfied with me as I am now. And so even if I don't find satisfaction in myself, I thank God that he does. And so there was a song that I couldn't, I couldn't sing. I know who God says I am because I thought it was me being boastful. But when I got the revelation that it, it doesn't have anything to do with me, it has everything to do with God and who he says you are. And so I could sing that song with so much more hope and, and meaning. I know who God says I am. I know what he says I am. I know where he says I'm at. And so his scripture says that I am chosen. In 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 4, I am called of God. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9, I am being changed into his image. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, I am a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19, I am forgiven of all my sins. Ephesians 1 verse 7, I am redeemed from the curse of the law. Galatians 3 verse 14, I am blessed. Galatians 3 verse 9, 
I am the head and not the tail. Deuteronomy 28 verse 13, I am above and not beneath. Deuteronomy 28 verse 13, I am victorious. Revelation 12 verse 11, I am set free. John 8 verse 32, I am strong in the Lord. Ephesians 6 verse 10, I am healed by his wounds. 1 Peter 2 verse 24, I am free from from condemnation Romans 8 verse 1 I am reconciled to God 2nd Corinthians 5 verse 18 I am joint heirs with Christ Romans 8 verse 17 I am more than a conqueror Romans 8 verse 36 Seven. I am accepted in him. Ephesians 1 verse 6. I'm the one that was the hardest to learn, but the most beautiful to understand. I am complete in him. Colossians, Colossians 2 verse 10. And so I thank God for making me complete, irrespective of whatever situation. You are in, you have been in, you will be in, you are complete in God. Hallelujah. And so he will make you new and he will continue to do so in Jesus' name.